Wonderful God. 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 Wonderful Lord. Speak to us today. Speak to us that we may hear you. Speak to us and lead us and guide us in the way that you would have us go. In the name of Jesus. We are yours, Lord. We're all yours. We're all yours. We're all yours. We're all yours. We're all yours, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus. We're all yours. Father, we're all yours. We're all in. We're all in. We're serving you. We're all in. Oh, God. In the name of Jesus. We hunger for you. We thirst for you. We long for you. In the name of Jesus, wonderful Savior, wonderful God, 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 wonderful Savior. Wonderful God, wonderful God, wonderful God, wonderful God, hallelujah, wonderful God, wonderful God, wonderful God, wonderful, 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 wonderful God, wonderful God, wonderful Savior, wonderful Lord, wonderful Lord, wonderful Savior. We are yours, we are yours, we are yours, we're yours, we're yours, we're yours. In the name of Jesus. Oh wonderful God. Wonderful God. Wonderful God. Wonderful God. Everlasting Father. Our Prince of Peace. Look on us today. 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 In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, wonderful Savior. We give praise to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, today. We give praise to him for all the great and glorious things that he is doing in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless the Lord today. We bless the Lord, we bless the Lord, we bless the Lord today in the name of Jesus. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the name of Jesus. Father, let your glory be revealed, let your mystery be made known. Let your glory be revealed, let your mystery be made known. Let your glory be revealed, let your mysteries be made known. Let your glory be revealed, your mysteries be made known. Let your glory be revealed, and your mysteries be made known. In the name of Jesus, we love you today. We give you praise, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, salvation and strength, power and might, wisdom and honor is yours. It's all yours. It's all yours, Father. We give praise to you. We thank you this day. We thank you this time. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you for allowing us to be here. We thank you for allowing these to be here. We thank you for their life, their health, and their strength. We thank you for blessing them and keeping them. Thank you for putting your arms about them. Thank you, Father. Thank you for keeping these in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we bless you now. We bless you for their life. We bless you for their health and their strength. We bless you for where you are taking them. We bless you for the direction in which you are taking them. We bless you. Ah, God, we thank you now. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for how you're doing it. Thank you, Father, for your healing virtue. Thank you, Father, for making a way. Thank you for making many ways. Thank you for making many ways out of no way. Thank you for being a satisfying portion. Thank you for canceling our past, canceling our hurt, canceling our debt, canceling our debt, canceling the debt, hallelujah, of what we have owed men, women, boys and girls. The debt we owe them, the debt we owe them, hallelujah. The debt, we owe a debt of living right before them. We owe them that debt. We owe them a, 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 a we owe them a debt of living a sanctified life in front of them. We owe it to them to do right by you. We owe it to them to live a holy life 
Oh God, we owe it to our neighbor. We owe it to our friends. We owe it to our family. We owe it to those, God, who are looking at us. We owe it to them. We are compassed about by such great cloud of witnesses. And we owe it to them to serve you in this body, to serve you, God, in this flesh, to serve you, God, in this soul, to serve you, God, in spirit and in truth. In the name of Jesus, that every part of me must line up. Every part of me, every part of me, every part of me, body, soul, and spirit, every part of me must come into unity, must come into agreement, must come into alignment. Every part of me, body, soul, and spirit, to bless our great God. I cannot just bless him in the spirit. I cannot just bless him in the spirit. But I've got to put my flesh under subjection. Put my soul under subjection. And my flesh and my soul must come in alignment with my spirit man. We must bless him together. Father, we bless you today. I command my soul, I command my flesh and my spirit to bless you. We come in alignment today. In the name of Jesus. That every part of me yield to you. Every portion of me yield to you. Every, every muscle, every fiber, every thought, Every inclination, every 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 perception, every proclivity yield to you. We say yes to you, Lord. We say yes to you, Lord. We say yes to you. Oh God, we say yes to you. We say yes to you. We say yes. Can I get a yes from you? Do we have anybody that would just give him a yes? Right where you are, would you just give him a yes? Would you just say, Lord, even me, I give you a yes. I give you a yes. In this body, I give you a yes. It, it, yeah, if you're broken, if you're tattered, torn, pain in my knees, pain in my back, pain in my head, my mind is everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Sons and daughters don't want to line up, don't want to do right, but that's okay. I'm going to put everything on hold and I bring my flesh. I bring my soul, my spirit into alignment to tell you, Father, that I yield to you. I'm not going to be scatterbrained. I'm not going to be scatterminded. No, I bring me into oneness and I yield to you. God, you are spirit, and they that worship you must worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, you are spirit, and they that worship you must worship you in spirit and in truth. And here I stand. To you, it's nothing new. To me, it's something new. Because it's me again. I have a prayer that needs an answer. I have a problem that I cannot solve. Father, it's me again. It's me again. Oh, that I might touch the hem of your garment. It's me again. Oh, that I might just persevere. Just another father. It's me again. Oh, that I might just clutch the hem of your garment. It's me again. I cannot allow my soul to get out of, out of perspective. I cannot get caught up in my feelings and my emotions my appetite and my desires. I cannot allow my soul to have this one. No, uh-uh, uh-uh. Cannot allow my flesh to stop me because of the pain. Yeah, because of the rejection I had to deal with. No, 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 no. We're not going to fear in this one. We're not going to panic in this one. We're not going to be sad-faced and sad-mouthed in this one. We're not going to be poor-mouthed in this one. No. No, no, God. 
But it's yielding time. It's yielding time. Tonight is yielding time. Mm, I yield to you, Lord. I yield to you, Heavenly Father. I yield to the moving of your spirit. I yield to your direction. I yield to the flow of the spirit. I yield to what you're saying. I yield. I yield to what you want to show me. I yield. I yield to discerning. I yield to discerning of spirits. I yield. I yield. I yield to you. Oh, Padipo, take God, I yield to you. Father, I yield to you. I yield to you, Father. I yield to you. Mm. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, God, hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Arebali, you will say, Kede, Mani Asia Teddy, Kete Abala, Mani di Ichiti Alla, Gazeote, Mete Padi, Ikishi Nashiko, Robo Sekede, Paliasiando Loco Sekede. Father, speak to your children. Speak to your children that they may hear you, O oh God. That they may hear you, O oh God. Mm. In the name of Jesus, when we give you praise, and the glory and honor is yours. Salvation and strength, power and might, wisdom and honor is yours in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Father, we're here to follow your lead. 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 We're here to follow your lead, Father. We're here to follow your lead. We're here to follow your lead. We're here to follow your lead. In the name of Jesus. And we give you praise. God blessings to everyone that is on the line with us today. God bless you. God keep you. Heaven smile upon you. Yeah, it's, it's a full day. <laughs> it's a full day. It's not a full day with a whole lot of work. It's not a full day with a whole lot of labor. It's not a full day with a whole lot of things. It's a full day of being arrested. It's a full day. It's a full day of being under arrest. It's a full day of being under arrest by the Spirit of God. It's a full day. And the Lord is arresting people. Stephanie Bush. He's arresting people. He's arresting people that will yield to him. He's not arresting hard-headed people. He's not arresting stubborn people. Now he, 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 he's arresting people. The police is arresting people who are breaking the law. But the Lord is arresting people who have found favor with him. Mm. The Lord is arresting people. Stephanie, Catherine, Jennifer, all of you who are on the line and you're watching us right now and even if you watch this later just lift your hand and say Father arrest me 
Arrest me. Arrest me. Arrest me for your purpose. Arrest me for your glory. Arrest me for your pleasure. Arrest me. I yield to your resting. Arrest me. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord. Father, locate them and arrest them. Find favor with them. When you pull them over, Father, find favor with them. Find favor in them. As, as Noah found grace in your eyes, find grace in them. In the name of Jesus, let your grace be found. Let your favor be found. Let your love be found. Let faith be found. You said that when the son of when when you return shall you find faith in the earth. Father, find their faith intact. Find their faith strong. Find their faith strong. Find them strong in faith. You who are watching, wherever you are hailing from, be found strong in faith. Strong in faith. Command your faith to come alive. Command your faith to come alive. Command it to excel. Command it to come alive. Cast out doubt. Cast out fear. And command your faith to be strengthened. Father, I will not doubt you. I will not doubt you. I will not doubt you, Father. I do not doubt what you're doing but I trust you, I honor you with all of my heart, soul, mind, body, and strength. I honor you, God, I honor you, I honor you. Favor work here, work here. Favor work here. Grace of God work here. Father, let your presence work, work here. You inhabit the praises of your little ones. Habitate here. Habitate here, Father. Father, habitate here. Habitate here. Habitate here. In the name of Jesus. I wish somebody would just tell him, Father, habitate right here. God sent an angelic host to go visit Lot. Lot was dwelling in the Sodom. Lot was dwelling in Sodom and in Gomorrah when the angelic host came to visit him. The Bible said the two men came to visit him. They were the angelic host of God on an assignment. Watchers that came to visit Sodom. Sodom said, no, 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 you're not going to stay in the streets. No, I'm going to host you. You're not staying here in this foul place. Mm -mm. If you found anything in me, you will not dwell in the streets. If you found any favor in me, Father, you will not dwell in the streets. Come into my residence. The Bible said, wisdom cried in the streets. Father, let wisdom dwell here. Let wisdom cry out from here. You don't have to cry from the streets, wisdom. I seek after you. I long for you. Father, your presence must habitate here. In Jesus' mighty name. Mm. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. The love of God locates you. Yeah. The love of God bless you. Yes. The love of God greet you. 
The love of God greets you. The love of God greets you. In the name of Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Father. If it had not been for a divine encounter, if it had not been for invited, if it had not been for a divine encounter with Jesus, there would be no perseverance. If it had not been for a divine encounter with Jesus, there would be no perseverance. There'd be no perseverance on my part. I cannot speak for you. God bless you, Shirley, Catherine. God bless each one of you. I appreciate you being here. But if it had not been for a divine encounter with Jesus, there would be no perseverance on my part. Hmm. No, there would be no perseverance on my part. There must be a divine encounter. Latanya Foreman, it's got to be a divine encounter. I didn't see you earlier, but lift your hands and just tell him thank you. Latanya Foreman, just lift that one hand and say, Father, here I stand. Arrest me. Arrest me. Arrest me with your grace. Arrest me with your favor. Arrest me. I'm here. Yeah, arrest me. You can pull me over anytime. Arrest me, Father. In the name of Jesus. We're not breaking the law. We're upholding the law. And the Lord wants to arrest somebody for upholding the law. Because upholding the law is good. Walking in his spirit is good. Doing what he says is good. Find grace in his eyes. Find grace with God. Be the Noah of your day that found grace in the eyes of God. Be the Noah of your day that while everybody is doing their own thing, going their own way, you said, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not going to do that. But you embrace him. You seek after him. You hunt for him. You long for him. You desire him. You thirst after him. And you say, yeah, I, I, can, I can use this one. I can use this one right here. I can use this one because I'm going to do something different that the world have never seen nor heard. And I can use this person. Because this person here, I, found, I see some genuine stuff in him. He's not... She's not, he's not so easily swayed. They're not uh -huh, uh, like the wind. They're not tossed to and fro with every wind and doctrine. They're not skipping things. They're not playing around. They don't live that type of life that they're playing around. They're not in and out. There's some stability. There's some stability in that one. And I, I want to use that one. God is looking for somebody that he can use because he see stability in you. Do you have that stability that God is looking for? Are you so in your feelings? Are you all in your emotions? All in your appetite? All in your desire? Unstable? Yeah, yeah. Are you the one that's going, why me? Why, why are you always picking on me? Why problem? Oh, we got to come my way. Why are you... And you got an attitude all the time. Now, nah, can he really use you to do what he want to do? No, nah, he's looking for that willing vessel. That when he come to town and you're saying, Father, come dwell in my house. No, you cannot dwell in the streets. You don't even know that it's an angel. There's no wings present. You just know that these are two men, that they're different. And they come to town and they're visiting. You don't see the angelic appearance on them. You don't know that they're angels. Lot did not know those two men was angels. Lot did not know. Lot just saw them as two young men because they was not 
dressed as angels. Their, their wings were not exposed to them. And the world saw them as men. Uh -huh. Sodom and Gomorrah saw them as men. Lot saw them as men. But Lot, it vexed his righteous soul. That's why he sat at the gate of the city. And when these two men came, Lot just made it his mind, I'm not going to let them be exposed to what I see. Come into my house. You don't need all of that. Mm -mm. They give Lot the plan of what they're getting ready to do. Lot is not exposed to what's getting ready to happen. This is where Lot makes excuses after the fact, not before the fact, while in the house, after he have made connection with them. If you go back and look at the text, Lot began to, yeah, hesitate. His son's not coming. I said his sons, mean his sons-in-laws. They, they, they don't want to come. They're they so inundated with the lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, the pride of life, and they're not wanting to fellowship. Stephen Hank, God bless you. Overseer Brown, I see you. God blessings to you. They, they're not wanting that. So they, Angel says, look, go, is there anybody else? Go get them. No, they don't want, they don't want no part of this. Well, you get out. Get your family and you get out. Because Lot hosted the presence of God. Go back and look at it. You'll find out that Sodom and Gomorrah laid that way and was that way for a long time. It just didn't start happening. That did not just start happening. And let me just throw this. This is not my lesson, but the Lord dropped this in my spirit a few days back. Could have been today. I don't remember. But go back and look at it and all the negative things we've been saying about Lot. All the negative things that we've been saying about Lot. Let's take it back. Please just take it back. Why? We're like, oh, he looked back for this land. He looked for the best land. He looked for this. He looked for that. And that may have been so, but God used that to bring Lot right where he needed Lot to be. And Lot needed, Sodom and Gomorrah needed a Lot. And Lot went to Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot, I believe Sodom and Gomorrah would have kept being as vile and vicious and evil and wicked as they have been except for Lot went there Lot was seeing things in Chaldees that was different he saw it he saw some difference with uh, Abram he saw some difference he saw how God dealt with Abram made them wealthy and there was some things that were going in Sodom and Gomorrah that it, it, it vexed Lot's righteous soul that's what it says the text says it vexed his righteous soul. He couldn't take it. He wanted to vomit. He wanted to puke. He wanted to regurgitate, throw up. He, nah, this is too vile for me. Here's the key that so often time we don't yield to. And that is having a vexation of spirit. Latanya Foreman, Catherine Webster, Jennifer Harris, Overseer Brown, Stephen Hanks, that when you become vexed, that vexation is like a knocking on heaven door. That vexation is another ram of praying. That vexation is a part of just, no, I'm, I, I'm frustrated, Lord. I'm frustrated. Sodom and Gomorrah was having a field day until light came. When light came to Sodom and Gomorrah, he was vexed. Can't believe I just came here with all my cattle and all of this. And then for this, for this, when they're doing all of this, I've never seen anything like this. And it vexed his righteous soul. And God says, let us go down, go down, go down, check it out. I hear a cry. Check it out. See if it's what I've heard. I hear vexation. I hear vexation. I hear something being vexed. Go down and check it out. Angelic host is coming down like watchers to watch and observe and look and see. Ah, uh, help me, Holy Ghost. 
came down and determined, yes, it was as vile as it was. Destroy it. That's okay. Destroy it. All because somebody was vexed. You want to move God? Become vexed where you are. You want to move God? You want to see God change America? You want to see God change your community, your town, your city, your state? You want to see God change your church, your home, your finances? You want to see God change your sons, your daughters? You want to see God change some things? I dare you to become vexed in your spirit. Frustrated, agitated, vexed. That vexation have a way of summing the presence of God. Yes, it does. I dare you to become vexed. I dare you to become offended. I dare you to become offended because of sin. I dare you to become offended by the evil that is happening in your area. I dare you to become offended by the sickness, by the disease that is trampling upon your peace. I dare you to become offended and let that offense go up to God. Let that offense come to God, the one who will fight your battle for you. It'll be better for a millstone to be tied about that sickness's neck. It'll be better for a millstone to be tied around cancers, high blood, low blood, sugar, diabetes neck. Then, then for it to offend the least of his little ones. Cast into the deepest sea. Become vexed. If it had not been for a divine encounter with Jesus, there'd be no perseverance on my part. This is lesson number 19, uh -huh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 1 through 27. Uh -huh, we were in the book. We expect your life to change for better forever. We, uh, you must expect the same. We're in the book. We talked about uh, verses 9, 1 through 9 on yesterday. Are you less the person because people are examining your authenticity? And today, the Lord ordained it that they which preach the gospel should live by the gospel. The Lord ordained that thing right there. <laughs> right there, right there. The Lord ordained that. That the Lord ordained it, that they which preach the gospel should live by the gospel. Father, help me to preach this, um, to teach this the way you designed it. Oftentimes we get into things because of what we see, what we feel. We think it's all about money. But allow me to teach this according to your intent. Holy Spirit, speak here. In Jesus' name. Verses 10 through 18 is what we're looking at today. The Lord ordained it that they which preach the gospel should live by the gospel. Yesterday, the, 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 the scripture in, let me go back to, let me go back to 7, verse 7 of yesterday. Who goeth to warfare any time at his own charge, who planteth a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof, or who feedeth a flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Say I these things as a man, or says not the law the same also? Or say I, or say not the law the same also? For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Does God not take care of the oxen? We have heard that one. We've heard that a long time. So I'm not even going to even touch on that. If I need to come back to it at some other time, we could. But I'm not even going to touch on that today. Amen. But today we're going to talk about the Lord ordained it. The Lord ordained it. That they which preach the gospel should live by the gospel. Or says he, or says he it altogether for our sake, for our sakes. No doubt this is written. 
that he that plows should plow in hope. He that threshes in hope should be partakers of his hope. If we have sown into you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? <laughs> yeah, we have sown into you spiritual things. My coming here today was to sow into your life spiritual things. Yeah, my introduction has been to sow into you spiritual things. At the, at the beginning of this lesson, it's to sow into your life spiritual things. Not sowing into your life carnal things. You have dealt with the carnal. You've handled the carnal yourself. But it's to connect with you in the spiritual things. God and Spirit, they that worship Him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. And here, I just want to be as an usher. As an usher. I'm not standing as God, I'm not standing as Christ, but I stand as your brother, as a servant of the Lord Most High. And I come before you as an usher to just help you the usher did not come to your house to help you get church or get ready for church. The usher did not come to your house and say, hurry, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Come to church, come to church. When you came, the usher was greeting you at the door. Come, another father. Come a little closer. Come down a little closer. Let me give you the best seat in the house. Is there anything else I can get you? You need a fan. You, you need some water. You need this. What, what, what do you need? What do you need? What do you need? Because you're getting ready to come for worship. And now that you're in a place of worship, I don't want to make you too comfortable, but I want to make you comfortable enough so that you can have your worries subside. I want to make it convenient for you so that you will not be worried about the outside. You will not be worried about the left aisle or the right aisle. But now you're in a place, in a good seating, good surrounding, good people, and you can focus. You can focus on just getting to him, just being in his presence. So I want to host you into the presence of Almighty God. But it's hard to be a host if one have not hosted me. What have hosted me? I want to believe that what have hosted me is an encounter with the Lord. And it is an encounter that told me I am here for you. Lord, there must be a better way. This is my testimony. Lord, there's got to be a better way. And to have the Lord speak to me and say, yes, there is a better way. It, 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 it startles me. I'm hearing a voice. This is not supposed to happen. I'm looking around, but I see no person. There's got to be a better way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father except you come. they come by me. I'm hearing voices. You know that Bible? You know that Bible that you have in your closet? That's, you, you covered it up? You were the shame of it? You have it buried in your wall locker? Go get it. And come and sit. I can't believe I'm doing this, but I, I, I have it. Sit, read. I don't know how to read this. Where do I start? Start from the beginning. In the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth and the earth without, fo without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and it goes on and it goes on and it keeps reading and I'm reading and it comes to the place the day you eat of this fruit you will surely die. And the God began to speak to me like he would never speak. And in that instant, I see my life flashing before me 
Everything that I've ever did from a child is flashing before my very eyes. Everything, Catherine Webster, everything, every, every, everything, everything wrong, everything guilty, everything, everything is flashing. I see it flashing before my very eyes. I'm remembering everything. I'm in pain. I'm crying out. I'm convicted. I'm hurt. I'm in pain. I can't change a thing. And while I'm seeing this flash before my very eyes, I am cast out into a place of outer darkness. I'm falling at a speed that could not be calculated. I'm falling. I'm crying. I'm yelling. It's dark. It's a thick darkness. It's a hideous darkness. It's a painful darkness. And I'm falling. I don't know what to say. It's like in prayer. We don't know how to pray as we ought to. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say that's going to give me access. I don't know what to say that's going to turn my life around. I am crying. And all the images around me. I'm not the only one. And there are so many images. I don't see any flesh, but all I see images. I see streaks. I see streaks of images. And I know that there are life, but there are streaks. Forbidden life. Life that's been disjointed. Life that's been excommunicated. And I am one of them. Crying out. No! I don't know what to say. I've never been to this place before. No! Falling at a speed that cannot be calculated. No! Trying to gain balance. Trying to gain control of my life. No! I can hear the nose. But I am not in my flesh. I can hear the no's. I am yelling a no. And this is the only place that I can yell a no, but nobody hears. No one understands the no. Because there's yelling and there's screaming and no one's coming to anybody's rescue. It's a pit. It's a dark pit. There's no depth to it, no end to this falling. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere. Lord, save me! And instantly, my eyes come open. Instantly, my eyes come open. I'm no longer falling. I'm no longer falling at a speed that could be calculated. I am sitting where I just parked myself a few moments ago. I'm clothed in my right mind. I can't believe this has happened. Prior to this, I was on two hits of acid. Some may say it was just an out of body experience. It was indeed an out of body experience, but much, much more. It was an encounter. That didn't happen once. It didn't happen twice, but three times that happened. Each time, Lord, if you save me, I'll live for you. Just help me. I'm not going to say that my life has been perfect. But I am going to say that each day, he, he stirred up a hunger in me. Every day thereafter, he would not give up on me. I don't know why I'm feeling led to share this testimony. I'm not given, and I still haven't given the depth of it from the beginning to the end. I've not given the depth of that testimony, but it is about encounter. Because it's those encounters that's going to keep you. It's those encounters that put a knowing inside of you that you cannot fight with, you cannot argue with, you cannot wrestle with. 
And no matter who tried to tell you otherwise, you're not listening because you know what you know. It's those encounters that we humbly submit and say, Father, thank you for the encounter. Thank you for proving yourself. Thank you for making yourself real to us. It's those encounters. Again, it's not the depth, it's not the totality of it, but it's enough to say, people, what's going to change your life is those encounters. Those encounters. Because it becomes, it, it becomes up to us, Catherine. It becomes up to us, Jennifer. It, 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 it's, it behooves us, overseer. It's, it, it's, it's our framework. We are the one mandated now to usher in others. But how can you usher them in if you have no instructions? How can you usher them in if you've had no encounter? But God wants to give you an encounter. He that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. He wants to fill you. But in filling you, he doesn't mind giving you an encounter. Because he want to know, he, he want you to know that if I'm filling you, I'm filling you with my spirit, my love, my time, my presence. And I'm always here. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And those are the things that come rain, come shine, come sleep, come snow, come hell or high water. It doesn't matter. The Lord says, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Do we have anybody? To have such an encounter doesn't have to go like that but you have an encounter you know that you've been in his presence you know that the lord has spake with you you know that he's shown you a side of him that you've never seen before you know it was god because man couldn't do that thing that you have just witnessed don't ever give up on that don't give up on that call do not forget that call sometimes you have to rehearse that moment be reminded of that moment. Be reminded of what the Lord have done. Wow. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? If we have taken the time to speak life to you, if we have taken the time to speak truth to you, if we have taken the time to speak the things of God to you. Is it not in you to support, to help, to pray, to strengthen, to open the door? If this have helped you, what is it that you can do to set the stage, to become a host, to become an usher, to usher others in, that they'll partake of this grace. What are you doing to shine this light to others so that others will see and know that the same Christ that you serve, that they can have, they can be privy to the same salvation, that they can come into this ark. They too, whoever they are, can come into this ark. If others, um, if we have sown unto you spiritual things, we have prayed for you. We have shared the scriptures with you. Is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Is it is it is it a great thing if we reap your support, your help, your prayer? Is it a is it too great? For you to pray. Yeah, 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 we need that. Is it such a great thing? I was moved when I was watching a video, and I'm, I'm, I got to move forward in this. I was watching a video of a young girl singing a song, and I guess one of her mentors was, I'm not going to name the name of the person, but she was singing a song, a worship song, and she was singing, and she was honoring God and just worshiping God 
worshiping God and just worshiping God. And while she was singing and worshiping, playing a guitar, and later she just began to sing and worship and praise to God. Next thing, she's now flat in a prone position on her face, crying out to God. I'm not going to call the name, but she's crying out, Father, save him. Be there for this person. This is all we got. We need this word. Help him. Help him. This girl was interceding for a man of God. This girl was laying flat on her face, interceding for a little girl. Looked like about 11, 12 years old. I don't know. Probably younger, younger than that. But she was crying and interceding for a man of God who uh, 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 is a prophet. Asking God to help. Why am I saying this? So often time we feel that the prophets, the men of God, need no help. Often time we feel as if they're good. They're good. We're the one that need help. I'm the one that need help. No, my knees hurting. My eyes hurting. My my neck is, is problem me. And my, my back is giving me some problems. No, I got cataract. I got ulcers and I got all these other things. Now I need the man of God to see about me. But this girl wasn't concerned about her life. She was laying in a prone position, crying out, Father, Father, please see about him. We need him. We need him. We as a people need him. Whatever need correcting, you correct that, but we need this man of God. In other words, protect his life. Don't let him be overtaken in a fault. Don't let temptation overtake him. Don't let don't, don't, don't let these things be overtaken. Don't, don't let him get put out. Don't let don't, no 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 help him. Help him. Help him to become uh 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 if he need to deal with whatever political, that's all right. Help him to deal with that. Whatever he need to do, God to to to, to establish a, 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 a house of God or the work of God or the ministry of God to see to it that the sheep, the, the, the people of God are protected. Father, help him. When this girl, the girl was praying out of the mouth of babes and sucklings have thou God ordained strength. If we have sown into your spiritual things, if we have prayed with you, if we have sown to your spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? If others are partakers of this power over you, and, and, and Paul called it a power. Paul calls those carnal things, he called those other things, he called it a power. If others are partakers of this power that's over you, are we not, are not we rather? Are we too good for it? <sighs> Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffered all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. You know, I thank God for Jesus. I thank God for what the Lord is doing. I can identify with the man of God here. I, I can identify with Paul here. And allow me to speak plainly. I'm not going to speak in the spirit. I'm not going to speak in the realm of the spirit. I'm just going to speak plainly as a man. And many of you know who, you, you know our ministry. We do not beg, we do not ask, we do not, we don't, we don't even suggest. We don't even suggest anyone to uh, sow into this ministry. We have not said so. We have not heard that. Because we believe that when it comes down to prayer, and when it comes down to uh, planting the word of God, planting the word of God and prayer, that we do this without pay. We, 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 we believe that you don't pay for the gospel. We, don't, we believe that you don't pay for prayer. We believe this. And so because of that, we have not uh, did these things. We have not asked you, no, 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 please, please. We have not done these things. Is it that we don't need uh, your help? No, it's not that. Is it that we don't want it? No, it's not that. We don't want any person 
who connect with this ministry to feel as though you're paying for what we're doing. No, because we will not play follow the leader. We'll not play follow everybody else. We'll not do that. We will not do that. We will not do it because everybody else do it. I'm, we're not going to do what everybody else do. No, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. The Lord ordained it that they which preach the gospel should live by the gospel. Yeah. We preach this gospel. Why do we preach this gospel? Do we preach it just to be preaching, just to hear the jargons of our words, you know, just to hear our words, hear, hear, hear our words as it, you know, try to make sense of it? No. Do we just practice on you? No. Mm -mm. No need to just practice on you with our words. Why? Because the word we speak, they are spirit and they are life. Why would I practice on you when every word we speak is life or death? But we choose not to speak death on you. We speak. To, we choose to speak life over you. We speak life, not death. We speak blessings, not curse. We have to strengthen you, to help you, to ensure that you move forward and do the things of God and be blessed doing so. And, and, and as long as we've been doing this, we don't come. We don't come begging you. We don't beg you to sow into this ministry. And I'm not doing that now. I want you to know this. Hear, hear me, hear me. Just because I'm bringing this up, we don't, we don't beg now. And, 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 and this verse, th these verses, it speaks the sentiment of my heart because I'm like, Lord, whatever we do, I want to do it the Bible way. I, I don't want to do it because everybody else is doing this. Because the last I heard you say, is that look you on the field the harvest is right but the laborers are few pray you to the Lord of the harvest that you will send forth laborers into your vineyard and I read another place it talks about the good Samaritan and then that he, the, the good Samaritan helps the person that's broken and destitute takes him to an inn and put him there and he says help him and whatever is right when I come back whatever is right I'll pay put it on my tab and I, I look at this as that's what the, the Lord would do for us. The Lord would put this on his tab. The Lord is obligated. The, uh, the Lord is obligated to fund his ministry. The Lord is obligated to take care of, of his vineyard. The Lord is obligated to do those things. But here's the thing. The Lord is always going to take care of his church. He's going to always take care of his people. He's going to always take care of his vineyard. But if you want to be blessed in the process, learn how to lend unto the Lord. If, if you want to be blessed in the process, just learn how to give unto the Lord. Proverbs 19, 17 says, He that has pity upon the poor, lend this unto the Lord. How many of you have been how many of you have seen people begging, people poor, people without, people don't have? He that has pity on the poor, lend this unto the Lord. And that which he has given, and that which he has given, that which you have given, he will pay him again. The Lord will pay you again. In other words, so often time we have allowed people to talk us out of our blessings. Why you give it to him? He just gonna drink it up. He just gonna smoke it up. He just gonna shoot it up. He just gonna do all these things to it. Why you giving man to God? Don't be stupid. Don't be foolish. And that might be the only thing they know. That might be their insatiable desire. You might be right about that. But that becomes your fear. That becomes your weakness. That becomes your pain. But here's the thing, Catherine Webster. Mail don't leave until you put a stamp on it. That mail can't do nothing until you put a stamp on it. If you put a stamp on yours, it'll do something. Father, this five dollars, this ten dollars, this twenty dollars, this thirty dollars, this hundred dollars. 
I'm going to sow this into this person's destiny. I put an assignment on it. I put an assignment on this thing, God, and I, I lend it as a lifting. He that has pity on the poor, lend this to the Lord. He that which, and he that, uh, 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 and he, and that which he has given, the Lord will pay him again. I'm, I'm just telling you, the Lord will pay him again. It's not for you to see where it's going. Ah, oh, to be that micromanager. It's not, that, no, the Bible doesn't say that about you being a micromanager. No. I know people are doing all kind of things. Now, I know they're doing all kind of evil now. That's right. If you feel, if you don't feel led to sow into their life, you don't feel led to give, if you don't feel led to lend, don't worry about it. But for those persons you meet, and you see them as a person that have lost their way. You see them as a person that's hurting. You see them as a person who, who just need a lifting. You see them who are on boards and broken pieces. And they can't find a way. And you consider yourself that I was there. I was lost. I was destitute. I was blind. I was, I was finkled. I was, I was a mess. But somebody gave me an opportunity. Somebody gave me a chance. They didn't judge me. They didn't assume the worst of me. And yes, I had an insatiable desire. Yes, yes, I, I, I too, I too. I too had an insatiable desire with drugs. But there came a point in my life. Something caused me to dry up. Something just took that away from me. Why won't you put an assignment on that gift? I, 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 I need to stay in the vein where I'm at But Years ago Somebody had a problem with Pepsis Pepsi, Pepsi Could you believe that? Pepsi They had a not a drinking problem but a Pepsi problem A Pepsi problem Man of God Could you Could you, could you, could you help me out? Could you help me out? Uh, look, I just want some Pepsi man I just need some Pepsi would you help me out? Would you just give me some Pepsi? A liter had those big old tall liter bottles. I just need some Pepsi. It was an addiction. They had a Pepsi addiction. Can you just can you just help me out? Could you just help a person? I, I just need some Pepsi. Just I need the money. Just just give me some Pepsi. I went and got the Pepsi. And when I got the Pepsi, I gave it to him. So you're not going to like this, but don't be surprised if you Pepsi over. It didn't mean anything right then. It didn't mean anything, Stephanie Bush. It didn't mean anything to them at that time, Shirley Kennedy. It didn't mean anything when I said, I, I, I give you this Pepsi, but don't be surprised if you Pepsi over. They didn't pay any attention. They kind of smirked and laughed and they consumed their Pepsi. I went on about my business. But later that night, they were in the hospital. I didn't do anything to the drink. I didn't do anything to the Pepsi. The Pepsi was still sealed. The Pepsi was still closed. But that night, they was rushed to the hospital and the doctors had to pump, pump their intestine, to pump their stomach. They said they had the worst problem with Pepsis. They, 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 no, they, they don't even drink sodas anymore. Now, why, why did I say that? That was a Pepsi thing. But why not do the same thing, put that gift to work? Draw them out of sin, Father. Draw them out of darkness. <laughs> Draw them out of darkness. In the name of Jesus. Sometimes all people need is just something from you. You walk in greatness. You walk in deliverance. And all these things represent you. Whatever that is that belongs to you, that represents you. And suppose you give them of that. And you give it to them. That represents you. Now that they've had it. And it's in their possession. 
And because you had that, now it's in their life. You place an assignment on it. Father, I do not condone, I do not give, I do not support, I do not, uh-uh, no, no, no. What they're doing, no. Mm -mm. But to prove that you are God, because of this seed planted, bring them out. Let this be a seed that brings them out. Let this be a seed that turns their life around. Let this be that seed, God, that, that unleashed your hellhounds, if necessary, after them. Father, let this be that seed that turned their lives around. And it happens. Let me share something with you that's not that favorable. I'm telling you about prayer. I'm telling you about giving. I'm telling you about the love of God. But don't you know evil people, wicked people, wicked women, wicked men, evil men, demons and witches and warlocks. Sometimes all they want is some, to get something from you. It's a power. It is a power just to get something from you. And they control. They can control your life by just getting something from you. You have not paid attention to that. Don't think that that's a fake. You've heard people just want your hair. Just want, just want a strand of your hair. Just want something from you. And they use these things against you. Why not use it in favor? No, you're not going out and giving hair. You're not taking examples of this. You know, and the doctors even take samples of certain things to tell, to determine certain things about you. It's, it's, it's a power. It's, it's, a, it's an avenue. But you can give. You can sow a seed. You can sow a blessing. You can sow a blessing and it brings forth a blessing. You can sow good and good will come back. It's not, that's not, not, is that not what the word says? Sow good things and it comes back. Just don't sow it evil. Don't sow evil. Sow what they're addicted. Sow what they're ped pedophile. That's right. Sow what they are messed up from the floor up. Sow something good into their life. Put an assignment on it. Father, bring them out. <laughs> it doesn't have to be because they're sick with a cancer, a cold, a flu, a, a, a high blood, low blood, tumors, stroke. It doesn't have to be a sickness of that. It could be a sickness of drinking, a sickness of pornography, a sickness of masturbation. What are they doing when they're masturbating? They're having an affair with demons and devils. That's what they're doing. They, they may not tell you this, but when they're masturbating, their mind is one place. Their mind is focused on uh, intimacy. Their, their, their mind is focused on ecstasy. Their mind is focusing on a climax. And when they're doing that, they have a person in mind. But then also while they're doing that, in the realm of the spirit, in the realm of the spirit, there's something else that's happening. There's something else allowing you to get caught up. You don't see it because you've engaging in the in the dark side of the spirit realm, and you're having an affair with demons and devils. You don't understand it. It's filth. It's uncleanliness. They don't tell you this. They don't tell you these things because you don't know, and you do it in ignorance, and you wonder how come. You were anointed the other day. You were anointed to cast out devils the other day. You were anointed to do some powerful things the other day. And then all of a sudden, while you're in your shower, you're masturbating. And then you're trying to do the same and look like it's just nothing. It's a guilt. Why the guilt? If it's not sin, why the guilt? Why are you feeling some kind of way if there's nothing wrong with it? You just had an affair with demons and devils. You just had an affair with a spirit wife or spirit bride or spirit man or yeah they're not going to tell you this they can't tell you something they don't know they don't tell you something that have not been revealed to them these are, this is the, these are the things that the gift of discerning of spirits revealed to you 
You don't learn these things unless you have the gift of discerning of spirits. So when you start doing certain things, the gift of discerning of spirits says, this is the reason why that's happening. When you're masturbating, this is the reason why that's happening. When you sit in there and you're having wet dreams, this is why that's happening. Can somebody just say, Lord, forgive me and help me? I didn't know. Just tell him. You don't have to put a name up. You know, I'm not even going to ask you to send a text out. Just, Lord, forgive me. I didn't know. Forgive me. Help me. Save me. Deliver me. I didn't know. And these are the things that the gift, deserting spirits, wake up those things. In other words, it doesn't wake up those dark sides, but it reveals to you what was happening. And you're wondering why things was happening in your life and you've become the tail instead of the head. Notice what Deuteronomy, and I've got to quit, but notice what Deuteronomy 28, 12 through 14 says. Listen, listen, please listen. The Lord shall open unto thee his good pledges. Now, when you go to Deuteronomy, it starts off with the good things first, so that's what I'm going to do. But notice what it says. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasures, the heaven, to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of your hand. The Lord wants to bless all the work of your hand, and you shall lend unto many nations. Ask yourself the question, when have I lend to a nation? And you shall lend to many nations. Thou shalt not borrow. You shall not borrow. Ask yourself the question, when was the last time you had to borrow something? And it says, thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord says, and the Lord shall make you the head, not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If thou shalt, if, if, if. See, this come with condition. If. Thou shalt hearken unto the commandment of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the, the words which I command thee this day to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. When you hear this, you say, I, I can do that. I can do that. But when you realize, hold up, fast forward, Go another further, go a little deeper, get past the blessings, listen to the curse. Go down to verse 43 on that 28th chapter of Deuteronomy. The stranger that is within thee, the stranger that is within thee, the stranger that is within thee, the enemy that is within thee, yeah, that, 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 that one that is ruling over thee, that is within thee. You thought that was a misprint? You thought that was a misprint, right? It's not a misprint. It didn't say the stranger that is with thee. No. It did not say, Catherine, the stranger that is with thee. It says the stranger that is within thee. What we think is talking about the stranger that's walking with the children. No, it is the stranger that is within thee. Shall get up above thee very high. Thou shalt come down very low. Your spirit man shall come down very low. Your flesh shall get up very high. And it makes you a slave, it makes you in the bondage. And that enemy, he shall lend to thee. That same enemy that will cause you to get in debt. That same enemy, speaking to your flesh, go borrow this, go borrow that, go borrow this, go borrow that. He shall lend to thee. And thou shall not lend back because you cannot lend back. You don't have what it takes to lend back. He shall be the head. Your flesh shall be the head. The flesh shall be the head. And you 
that be the tail. It doesn't matter how you look at it. Right, you you don't you don't want to you don't want to see it from that spiritual perspective, and you want to see it as somebody else doing this. Okay, that too. Your enemy or your neighbor, he shall lend to thee. Thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be your the head, and you shall be the tail. Moreover, all these curses, that's what it is. That's exactly what it is. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. Because thou hearken not to the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his stature which he commanded thee. You didn't keep it. So here's what we do. All this time, you violated, we violated, and we didn't know. We forgot these things. We walked away from it. We say it doesn't matter. That's the Old Testament. It does not matter to me. That's Old Testament. That's the Old Testament law. We're not under that law. Okay, that, that might be, that might be your case. That might be fine. We're not under that law. But how come you're not drinking from the graces of it? How come you're not above it? How come you're not above? You're still beneath. How come you're beneath and not above? How come you're still borrowing and you're not the lender? You better go, we better go back to Deuteronomy and repent. Father, forgive me. That sin, that curse that is upon my family and that made me, that family and I, Father, move the curse. Take away the curse, Father. Show me what I need to do to repent and take away the curse, Father. Remove the curse. Give me understanding, Father, how to break this curse off of my neck. No, Father, I've inherited my father's sin. I've inherited my own sin. I've inherited whatever. Reveal to me what I need to do. I, I cannot stay here. Time and chance is given to all, and I violate it probably because of the proclivities that have been passed down, the proclivities, an old, an old culture that's been hand, hand down to me. And I did what everybody else is doing. I'm following their mandate. We're not going to follow the mandates of everybody else here. There are things that invokes curses upon people when you walk in those things. Masturbation invokes curses upon your lives. And you can't come out from under it. Doing what everybody else do can invoke a curse upon you. There's so many things that can invoke a curse upon your life. You didn't know you were privy to the curse. You didn't know you were guilty of a curse. You didn't know you were doing a curse. And you're praying, 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 praying. Father, Father, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. You were taught to go a certain way. You were taught to doubt. You were taught to fear. You were taught to, to, to hate. You were taught to, 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 to not yield totally on God. You were taught to go to the doctor when you're hurting. You were taught uh -huh, to, to rob Peter and pay Paul. You were taught. There's so many things we've been taught to do. Stop following that pattern. Father, help me. Help me to do it your way and not mine. Don't let me do what everybody else is doing. If you don't tell me to do it, don't let me do it. So it looks like they're prospering. It looks like they're, they're building houses and they're building, they're building bigger barns. But don't let me do it because they're doing it. Let me do it because you tell me to do it. Let me do it because you said, James, open that door. Walk in that door. Open that pipeline. Do this. Add this to the ministry. Then allow me to do so. But until then, no, we're not doing that.
We want the people of God to be blessed. You know my time is up. I've got to go. I've got to go. But let me let me finish this. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a thing, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? If others are partakers of this power, of this power over you, and it is a power, if others have been partakers of this power over you, or not we rather, nevertheless, we have not used this power. No, we have not tapped into that power. We've not done what everybody asked, um, everybody else is doing. We're not causing you to pay for this these prayers. We're not calling you to pray for this pay for this ministry. We're not asking you to. We're not making you pay for this gospel. No, you don't pay for this gospel. You don't pay for it. <laughs> Nevertheless, we've not used this power, but suffered all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. And we do not want to hinder the gospel of Christ. We believe that the gospel of Christ want us to go into every place, every city, every town, every state, all throughout the U.S. And wherever else God wants us to go, God wants us to go. He don't want us to be hindered or delayed. We believe that God is going to do a great work. Now, we will say this. You don't pay for this gospel. And anybody who wants to support this gospel, we don't hold you back. If you want to support, people have been asking and sending in texts. How do we support your ministry? How do we do this? How do we do that? And we've given them to know how to do so. But not because we have told them, you're going to do this. We want you to sow, 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 sow. You, you, we don't do that here. If God tell me to do it, I will do it. And you'll know that, wait a minute, that's something. He don't do that. And he's doing that, that's, yeah. But we want you to know that if you do, you're doing it unto the Lord. We want people who want to do what God have asked them to do. And when they know that God have invested, God have done something, they have got something out of this, and they do this, then they can say, and we can say, if you've sown that unto the Lord, of course God's going to pay you. We've not told you to do it, but if God told you to do this, and you've done this, God's going to return rewards back unto you more than what you'll ever know. You will not lose your reward. Lest we should hinder the gospel. We're not going to hinder the gospel. The gospel is going to grow. The gospel is going to go. The gospel is going to excel. Amen. And you're going to pray with us. You're going to pray for us. You're going to pray that the Lord will have his will be done in our lives. Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things and I'm only I'm going I'm going to stop I'm going to stop at verse 18 I just want to read it I just want to read it I just want to read it that's my stopping point man I'm going to read it I'm not even going to expound no more all right I'm not going to expound just let me read it if you will uh, tolerate me just a little bit let me start at verse 13 yeah do you not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple and they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. But I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things, that it should be done unto me. For it were better for me to die than that any man should make my glorying void. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid up upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, key, if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me, what is my reward then? Verily that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. And that's where I am. And I thank God for this lesson. And I thank God for this teaching of, by Paul then I say, Father, let your glory be revealed. Let your mystery be made known. 
And we don't come to preach for pay. We don't preach for pay. We don't preach for these things. But Father, we do it out of the out of the, 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 the pressing in the spirit to carry on the assignment that you've given us. And we know that whatever's right, you will pay. We don't do this for pay. We do this because of great love. We do this because thou God has given us this gospel, to preach this gospel in season and out of season. We give you praise now for what you're doing. In Jesus' name. Father, we pray that you will lift men up from where they're down, bring them in from where they're out, forgive them for where they're wrong, and help us. We will not succumb to a curse. We will not walk under the bondage of the curse. But you will liberate us from the curse. Show these your people, Father. Show these your people. Show these your people. Hallelujah. Show these your people. Mm that you want to lift them. You want to bring them up and out and forgive them for where they're wrong and forgive all of us. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for what you're doing. And according to our faith, so be it done unto us. According to our faith, Father, let the work of this gospel be done. According to our faith, give us elevation. According to our faith, cause us to plant Oh God, hallelujah, cause us to plant seeds all throughout this America, not only this America, but globally. Cause us to plant seeds. Cause us to plant kingdom work. Cause us to plant souls. Cause us to plant fruit. Cause our fruit to remain. This is your vineyard, and we're in it. Whatever is right, you will pay. We thank you for it. Now, Father, cause this people to know that this thing is of your doings and not of our own. And we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. God bless you. My time is up. I've got to go. But we love you. Go in the strength of the Lord. Amen. Amen, amen. God bless you. Father, we thank you. Bless these and keep them in Jesus' name. Have a blessed day, everyone. We love you. Go in the strength of the Lord. Hallelujah.